Hi, everybody, and welcome to So What Happens Next, a show where we try to guess what a movie's about, watch the movie that we've never seen before, and see how close we were, and maybe have a really interesting conversation about the movie afterwards. As always, I am one of your hosts, Thomas. I'm Amber. And this week, we have a throwback movie. It's George Lucas, but not Star Wars. It's Willow, 1988. Beautiful today in the city. It I'd is. Like it's to say. really nice outside. Oh yeah, no. We took our dogs for the walk. It was great. They're pooped out and just sleeping on the floor right now. So. <laughs> but it's also a magical day to watch a magical movie. We have Willow from 1988. It is directed by Ron Howard and written by George Lucas. So, you know, it's like Star Wars, except not quite. <laughs> <laughs> And it's also a nice change from, like, Candyman last week, which was, like, gory and bloody and overly operatic, question mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as always, I have five things on the board about what this movie is. For those of you listening at home, that is, one, an evil queen, two, a magical land, three, a baby, four, George Lucas's involvement, and five, this movie was made in the 1980s, so if you want to kind of get a perspective of style, there you go. It does not take place in the 80s, it's just filmed in the 80s. So, Amber, how will we open it up to you? What do you think this movie's about? Well, judging from the theatrical poster, mm-hmm. when I looked at it, I it looked like one of those adventure quest movies, and so you have the hero of the movie that's on a quest to save a princess... And since you mentioned that there's an evil queen in the movie, I believe there's some sort of prophecy that occurs with a child who may become the ruler of the land someday. Ooh, and so she's okay. out to get that. Kind of like Snow White. I was about to say, this sounds yeah, like very, Snow White, yeah. but maybe a little bit more active. I don't yeah. know. As a kid, I have to admit, Snow White was not my favorite movie. I mean, it's what, from like the 30s or something? It's a yeah. little movie, but... It, Every, I just remember when I watched it as a kid kind of waiting. The whole movie would always hit me like I was waiting for it to start. And then, you know, like you're singing hi-ho, hi-ho in the beginning. And then the queen's like, eat the apple. I don't want to eat the apple. Eat the fucking apple. And she eats the <laughs> apple. And then she's like passed out, right? And it's just sort of like all I can really remember experiencing as a kid was just from the point where she's passed out. Like all of that happens so quickly. And then she's just like. It's just there. Like, th- she's just there. Yeah. Nothing really occurs. The movie doesn't feel like it moves. Like, it, just, it doesn't feel there. like she's a part of the movie. That's perfect. Centered, That's perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Centered around her. Right. It's really, oh, let's look at the drawers. We get to know their names. Right. We don't they sing know, a song like, and all yeah, this shit. anything about Snow White. And the worst part is, it's like the hero of the movie, the, the prince. Like, I don't know if you learn anything about him until he just kind of comes and kisses her in her weird glass coffin which like by the way she would be dead inside of because that thing would be like a greenhouse with no oxygen she'd just yeah. be frying in unless there unless they poke some holes in there that oh yeah, they poke see. some holes in the bottom yeah, that come through. yeah. <laughs> jesus yes no way it's a weird almost twisted movie if you think about it too hard yeah but anyway so you have an evil queen and a baby i i, I think i can get behind that like it's it's the prophetic child that she has to stop from eventually becoming king and taking over her land or something. I don't know. Sure. Okay. Um, how do you think this movie is going to feel given like George Lucas, the eighties were so like the uh, last We're going to have some involved? music in there. You're going to have music? Singing. You're going to have singing and stuff? Yeah. There's, there's gotta be a song or two. Do you in mean it. like a, as in like a musical or like in Return of the Jedi when we're in Jabba's palace and they're just kind of doing a random stop dead in yeah, the movie. Yeah, you've got like music. strippers in the corner that are just Do you like, think this movie's going to have strippers in the corner? <laughs> well, no, not like that, but it's just going to be 
like George Lucas. Like, just, yeah, it's all good. And then there's just some weird parts in there that you're like, huh? Okay. I think that that's a good way to describe yeah. this movie. At least Star Wars is it's like, yeah. especially it's like the tampering. Like, it's not yeah. bad, but it's also not like you could live without it. Yeah, like it doesn't. Yeah, help. it was just put there basically, right. and you have to deal with it. I think that summarizes <laughs> a lot of like the probably the most tame of the opinions of like the re-released original trilogies it's like he edited them i didn't really need it it's kind of weird it doesn't kill the movie but it's i don't need it like it didn't have to happen and i would have been fine yeah um i guess it doesn't have to go back but it doesn't need to be there either and i think that's an interesting thing i'm curious because we're gonna be watching this on disney plus Apparently, I had read that Disney Plus had changed a little bit more of the Star Wars original Star Wars trilogy before releasing it on there. Oh, I, you know, that could be false. I don't know. I, I've, I've watched them and didn't notice anything glaringly different. But maybe they're doing the same thing to Willow, and George Lucas got another crack at it. Unless Ron Howard like stopped him dead. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I guess as far as my thoughts on this movie go, I wouldn't be surprised if Amber, you're totally right prophetic baby evil queen or it's the queen's baby and the queen the baby's more powerful than the queen like inherently it's a magic it's one of these like mad it's like baby yoda everybody wants baby yoda and baby yoda is a baby so he's kind of neutral like he's not really good but he's not evil he's just a baby Mm -hmm. i think it's like that you have this evil queen who has magical powers and then a farmer or like a I don't know, like a blacksmith, you know, one of those, like, I'm not really anybody characters or something Mm -hmm. is going to be like our main character gets roped into this whole thing of like, I got to get this baby out of here. Um, and it turns out the baby's more powerful than the queen and the queen wanted to like get rid of the baby or use the baby for nefarious purposes. But if the baby were good, maybe they'd have a happier magical land. I think we're going to have music. I don't think we're going to have a, singing number but i think we're gonna have some like funky 80s kind of techno-y thing going on if you think of like yeah yeah, like like the um what is it the ambience type of music going on or just kind of like what you would see in like the dark crystal like right like that oh and there has to be puppetry in there oh for sure there's gonna be loads it's george lucas and ron howard there's gonna be loads of puppetry yeah i think we're gonna be dealing with like solid 80s synth music and i think you're totally right we are going to have puppets i would not be surprised if at least one main character in this movie is a puppet and i would also not be surprised if they die and or almost fake die kind of type situation yeah the whole disney death thing so we're gonna take a second we're gonna watch the trailer for this movie and then we're gonna give one quick final thought before we go off and watch it okay so any quick final word after watching the trailer I couldn't really tell what was going on because there was just there was because just it was the much. 80s and they knew how to make a damn trailer. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It was like, OK, I see the evil queen. She's like, where's the baby? Kind of oh, yeah. like from Ice Age. Like, where's the baby? <laughs> no, I think I think I might have hit the nail on the head on that I one. Think, I think yeah. it's her baby. And it's like, where the fuck's my baby at? Yeah. Uh, interesting to see Warwick Davis is like the main character in this movie. I mean, I knew that going in, but. Like, it's kind of cool. Like, I have no idea who that is. He was, uh, he was one of the Ewok. He was the main Ewok guy in oh, okay. Return of the Jedi. So he's the one that Leia finds in the woods. It mm-hmm. helps her. Like, he, he played that guy. Okay. Um, He was, like, a little kid, I think, at that time, too. So it was, like, his him, like, it growing up. He's also been in every single Star Wars movie, it's, I think, since then. Okay. Um, And he's been in, like, 10 out of the 12 okay. as, like, someone. Oh, like, he's just, gotcha. like, cameoed as a character, and I think in a couple of them, he's, like, the same character. Like, okay. he's in Solo. Yeah. Um, So, I guess maybe maybe this movie sort of helped that. Ron Howard did Solo. George Lucas did Star Wars. Maybe he's just kind of playing all his, you know, big-name people. I don't know. But I think it looks interesting. It looks whimsical as hell. It's, like, a lot of it kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings. Well, you got to think, like, these things were inspired by Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings didn't come out till like 2002. Oh, yeah. You know? So, mm-hmm. like, this was Especially, one of those... like, the people in the armor and... Right. Yeah. No, this movie, like, again, I mean, I know it's George Lucas and all, but, wow, like, the special effects that look like they're going into this one-off fantasy movie is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, 
I think that no matter what, it'll be delightfully surprising. Yeah. However, I am a little curious because the trailer we watched is about the Blu-ray re-release of this movie, and they talk about some edits they might have made. So <laughs> let's see if there's some like blatant CGI of the early 2000s in this. Yeah. But go ahead and come along with us as we journey to the magical land of Willow. And we're back. So, what do you think? It was interesting. I thought it was fun. It was <laughs> like a, it was like a, I don't know, like, I think first at the gate, I mean, it's a lot like Star Wars. Yeah. Like, uh, especially at the end, almost uncomfortably so. It's just kind of... Yeah, we're doing Star Wars in a fantasy realm. <laughs> like, I don't know. I I guess so compared to like what we thought it would be, you know, what I I feel almost upset that we didn't quite get the music that we wanted. We got it, but not in a huge, you know, we wanted that weird synth 80s music. Yeah, we didn't really get that at all. No. It happened one. I have it I have a note of it, but like it I remember it only happened I think when they came into the little village. Yeah. Which I got to say I want to see straight up. I want to see Warwick Davis in more stuff. Like I know he's a little person and everything. He's also much older now though. Yeah, but I mean he's I he's still like doing Star Wars and That's things. That's true. And I guess I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't, and that shouldn't be hindering him. I mean, like, this is a really good example of, like, it wasn't really a thing, mm -hmm. I feel like, in this movie. Like, it was addressed in the sense that, like, all the normal people were shitting on him, right? Yeah. For being a little person. But, like, I don't know. Like, he's a really good actor, and mm -hmm. I liked his performance in this movie, and it, like, was... It wasn't like, oh, no, this is distracting or something. Like, I feel like people thought that maybe back in the day when different nationalities and races were getting into movies. But yeah. it's just like, the dude's a good actor. Let him do some stuff. Yeah. That's not a George Lucas joint. Like, I don't need to see him be an Ewok. Yeah. And I don't need to him to just only be in Star Wars as little bit parts. Yeah. But yeah, I guess like to get into the movie a bit, Amber was pretty on point. Like, the kid <laughs> to be born... Which they got all kinds of crazy names for these peoples. And I tried yeah. to keep them. I think the kid is a daikini, which I feel like is a form of a bikini that is, I don't know what it is, but I feel, like it's a, I feel like a daikini is like a Instead thing. of a tankini, it's like a. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, there's some kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's a daiquiri with like a bikini wrapped around it or some <laughs> shit like that. I don't know. But, um, and then, then Warwick Davis's people are called the Nelwyn, which just. I can't tell who if this was like a fantastical world that maybe George Lucas started and like didn't really get off the ground or if this was a lot of just like we're making up shit as we go. Yeah. Who cares? Because it just seemed all over the place with this stuff. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, basically the movie kind of goes, uh, there's a prophetic kid who's supposed to destroy this evil queen who kind of rules the world. So you get kind of like a Herod situation where he's like well kill all the little kids that are being born and so she's killing all these kids and then you get kind of a moses situation where somebody escapes with the kid and puts her down the river or whatever yeah and she winds up uh in the hands of uh warwick davis and his family which i think that's something that you don't really see in these movies that often anymore mm -hmm. is like these people having a family at the beginning of the movie yeah like that that almost completely threw me for a loop cuz i'm thinking yeah. like in lord of the rings frodo's just a dude yeah, sam's it, looking yeah it's like but... as if um the movie is more focused on samwise ganji than frodo exactly and it was yeah, I mean, it kind of, you're kind of right. It's like if the only characters in Lord of the Rings were Sam and maybe Aragorn. Yeah. Um, like a cocky Aragorn, which I got to say, Val Kilmer was a lot of fun in this movie <laughs> as like the rough and tumble whatever thief guy. Yeah. Was. Like it was it was 
enjoyable to watch it. I think the big enjoyment for this movie is just the fucking set design. Yeah. Like, the movie itself, I think if it didn't have, I assume... And the fact that they had all, like... Like, when they were, they introduced, like, the village to you. Yeah. They had other little people, too. I mean, right. it was, like, Everyone was. Yeah. I was, them. I was really, like, whoa, okay. I was really impressed. Because, so, I don't know if you know this, but, like, at the, in Star Wars Episode Six, that's what happened with the Ewoks. Gotcha. Um, all, ev- almost all the Ewoks are little people. Um, I think it got to the point where they actually couldn't find enough. I might be mixing it up with Wizard of Oz, because I think Wizard of Oz did something similar. But I think the Ewok ha- the Ewok sequence did have a bit too many people, so they had to find like kids to do stuff um, because there just wasn't enough like little person actors. Yeah, but I thought that was actually really cool. And like everybody's a character; it's not just like here's a bunch of rando little yeah. people running around like just for sh- for sake of like being set pieces. Like they actually did stuff in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have uh, like they have like a Gandalf kind of character i guess yeah. like i guess if i were to throw like willow's character in is he is someone who's not very confident and he wants to do he wants to be like a sorcerer or something like that yeah is that what he keeps yelling at everybody yeah he like wants and to it do, looks like they only choose like you have to answer person. the question right yeah you have to answer the question right which if i recall is what finger has all the magic in the world or something like that yeah is more or less what he what he asks everybody and everybody picks one of the Gandalf guy's fingers yeah. and they're all wrong. Yeah. And, you know, the answer you find out five minutes later is that it's in your finger. Like you're supposed to raise your own hand up yeah. and go my finger, which you kind of get from, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of obvious. Like you're like, Oh yeah, that's the whole thing is the power is in you kind of type deal. This movie's lighthearted enough to, I think to where it doesn't lose anything for that. Yeah. But yeah, and I think the Gandalf, what the Gandalf character tells him, like, oh, you should be more confident in yourself or something. And that's sort of Willow's arc in this movie, yeah. is him being more confident in himself. And there you go. Yeah, because he's not, like, necessarily the village idiot. He's a village, but... like, screw up. Yeah. Like, he's not a bad guy, and he's not hated, but he kind of has some powerful people in his village against him. Mm-hmm. He's got a great loving family, but, you know, more often than not, he's just kind of like, yeah, I'm trying to be a magician. I'm not doing too well. This movie's like Lord of the Rings if Gandalf made everybody go. Instead of, like, who wants to go take the ring again? I was like, you are going to take the ring to Mordor, Frodo. Thanks. And, like, <laughs> oh, and you seven people are going to go with him or nine yeah. people are going to go with him, whatever. And they just leave. But, you know, it's whatever. Uh, the baby was great in this movie. Yeah, the baby had the so best expressions in this it, movie. <laughs> I'm sure that that was just like a lot of work on the cinematography part. Like yeah. They probably really just sat there with a camera in this baby's face for hours and hours waiting for it to make like a good expression. Yeah. But I mean, the editing was so well done. It was it was like this baby's reacting to everything they're saying and yeah. all the stuff they're doing. I was kind of shocked that they were so quick to uh, dump the baby on Val Kilmer in the beginning. When they meet him, he's in, like, a cage. Oh, yeah, and they're just like, oh, here you go. Um, You're human, so... Yeah, you're, you're one of the Daikini of, yeah. or whatever. Here's here's the baby. And he's like, cool, that's fine. And I'm just like, what? What? Yeah. Like, why would you do this? I, it was... It was... It was weird. Yeah. I didn't care for it. Um. But, yeah, they eventually get him away. Willow gets a magic wand from the... Uh, can we talk about the fucking, what were they called? Brownies? Yeah, the brownies. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, they dump the baby on Val Kilmer and the brownies, which is a magical... Steal the baby. Is this a thing? Have you ever heard of brownies in, like, fantastical lore before? No. Neither have I. Until this movie, I've never heard of... Like, I've heard of almost everything in this. Yeah. Aside from, like, I think the there's names. a different name for them. There's, there gotta be like, yeah. I don't know, because like they make it or something like that, like sprites or something. Maybe. Yeah, because they're like little. They're basically for you guys listening. If you have not seen this movie yet, if you have seen Night at the Museum, they're like, oh, the character, the cowboy and the Centurion characters. Like they're two yeah. miniature people that are like running around for nothing more than comedic relief. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure if I watched this as a kid, I'd probably think they were like funny as shit. 
But as an adult, I feel like I kind of want an edit of this movie where those people are just removed because they don't do anything. Yeah. The only thing they do is they steal the baby, <laughs> which is like how they get yeah, into the movie. And then they hang around. They're for like, like ticks. The they like show of, up and yeah. cause something and then they're still there. <laughs> Uh, then yeah, they sit around forever, and it's just like the only thing they facilitate is Willow getting the wand, mm-hmm. which is gnarly as hell in like both the cool power term and the actual shape of the thing. It's it's not the straightest looking wand in the world. I mean, it's like a gnarled up stick. Oh, yeah, I mean, it looks I, like something they just found. Yeah, on they, the I mean, side of the road. And it's kind of like <laughs> yeah, did they just like find a stick and polish it up? And they're like, we need a wand. They're like, okay, cool. Here you go. I found it on my way to work today. Uh, shop guys cleaned it up. <laughs> Here you go, Warwick. It's your wand. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. yeah, I could have done without the brownies. I don't so think much. they really needed to be in the film. No. Yeah. I, I think because they don't, I think they do. Especially like, since you have, so you have a little person and then, yeah, and then you have the brownies, which is kind of just like, why? Yeah, is it to be like there are littler people? Is yeah, it like some kind like, of, I feel I, like there's a commentary being said here or something. Yeah. I don't really know. Like, is, is it weird. supposed to be like a whore and here's a who where, you know... Yeah, it doesn't a, matter what size yeah. you are, what shape. But it, it does, though, because there's the one thing they could have done was what? when they're in prison and the brownies come to pick the lock. Oh, and I was like, right. OK, the brownies are earning their merit to be in this movie. Yeah. And then Val Kilmer's like, fuck off, let me do it. And he takes the spear and he picks the lock himself. Yeah. And I'm like, so all they really did was bring you a pin. Exactly. Like, like they're not as helpful as the ones at night at the museum, for sure. No, because they don't, they don't <laughs> do anything. The ones at night museum were like the most developed characters in that fucking they movie. They were. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in this, they're just, they're nothing more than comedic relief to like sit and yell at the screen. And yeah. I'm sure in the eighties that was funny and as shit. And they don't even make any sense. Oh, I know. They're like, French like, or yeah, something. Yeah, it's and like a weird sort of gibberish like talk. Yeah, and I mean it's just like screaming. It's yeah. just mindless screaming, which yeah. I'm sure to kids is like funny as fuck, but like I don't know. I don't know if it would have been that funny when I was a kid because I kinda look at it and I'm just like, this is really like it's not doing anything. They're not making yeah. a joke. They're just making noise. Mm-hmm. And it's more just annoying. I mean, hell, half the characters just ignore their existence. Yeah, they do. Like I didn't really hear them talking. I mean, um, it would have probably them. been funnier if they were crushed under someone's foot, but that would have been too. I feel like at least one, they got squished, but are okay. Yeah. <laughs> been funny. I mean, like, have the wild hair looking one, like, yeah. get squished, and the other one, like, no, insert name here. And then, like, he gets up, he's like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, like, I fell in a hole. And he falls in, like, a little mouse hole or something yeah. like that, like, something, something stupid like that. Ooh, if we talk about Val Kilmer in drag... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh how does that set up? So they did the the Willow gets the baby back, I think. With yeah, the brown, they and do. the brownies are like, We're coming oh, okay, so Willow gets the wand, the brownies are like, We're coming with you. He has a quest to go find some other magical woman. Find the uh the sugar baby lady. Yes. Um yeah, the sugar so, glider um, or whatever. Yeah. Um and he gets the wand, and he's supposed to take it to her and all this other crazy shit. The witch turned her into a sugar glider or something like that. So he's going into, like, the bar. And this, I thought this was a pretty cool scene because this felt kind of like a weird inspiration for that one scene in Lord of the Rings when they first get to the Prancing Pony in Fellowship. Oh, yeah. And everything's bigger than them. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, we're looking for Gandalf. And then <laughs> the guy's like, well, hello there, little hobbits. Except nobody in this movie treats him like that. They yeah. all treat him like a piece of shit. And I'm like, wow, like... A little bit more accurate, oh, I feel man. like. <laughs> I, but like, at the same time, I think Lord of the Rings would make more sense because it's it's a world where like all these people are interacting all the time. That's true. And so when he's like, oh, hey, And there's hobbits. so many different types of people, too. Right. Yeah. And this guy's like, we got hobbit-sized rooms and shit. Like, I am owning a business and I am trying to make money. So the smartest way to do this is by treating everybody like normal fucking human. Whereas in this movie, they're like, what? They keep calling him peck. something. What? Peck. Peck. Yeah. They keep calling him a peck, which I don't know if that's like a real term for a little, like a real derogatory term for a little person. But I mean, like I keep yelling at him and I'm just like, this is like Tarantino levels of (laughs) of using derogatory language. Like, but they're just giving this guy a real shit time for being in this bar or wherever he is. Mm -hmm. 
And um, he comes across, he like stumbles in a room. He's running away from people with the baby. Yeah. He stumbles in a room where. Because uh, I think he's being chased by the uh, soldiers. Yeah, the, the, the evil soldiers, soldiers yeah. are chasing him. Yeah. And uh, he runs in this room and there's Val Kilmer and this woman like stuffing his shirt with pillows or fruit or something like that. So it looks like his boobs, and he's like, "The fuck!" And Val Kilmer is like, "I know your husband's coming. We're getting this done." So <laughs> the husband walks in, like blind, stinking drunk, looks at Val Kilmer, and apparently thinks that he's the most attractive woman there, with his wife right there in the room. I know that's and so it, insulting. But it's his comment that makes it disgusting when he's <laughs> like, "You want to breed?" And Val Kilmer's like, ah, "No, no, no, no," and then. I think they find out he's not a woman or some shit. Yeah. They're chasing him after, they're chasing after him. But I mean, just like that guy, I was like, who the, f-? I mean, that's like a Lucas line if I ever heard it. Yeah. It's just you like, want to breed. It's like, you know, you could come up with some kind of euphemism for sex. I know. And it could be much nicer than that, but I mean, it, no. it can be gross. I can just imagine him saying that to his life. I can't like that's the that, because that, he that, doesn't know how things work but He's that line like, like oh you mean george lucas <laughs> george that lucas like, oh. to his wife <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how to like i feel like george lucas could write like really great poetry but when it comes to speaking like normal, i feel like that's just how he speaks but i mean like no see i feel like he talks like a normal person but it's just when it comes to writing it yeah i mean like look at star wars it has some of the clunkiest guess, dialogue yeah like i feel like it might have sound great in his head but when they right, actually it, said it probably it. sounds awesome on paper because yeah. it sounds like this shakespearean thing not mm-hmm. want to breed but whatever yeah. I'll, it's like star wars does and it comes out like just dude this is falling so flat like, make him talk <laughs> make him talk like normal fucking people please <laughs> But then you have like this guy who's like want to breed, and I'm like, this is the opposite direction of that, and we need to find something in the <laughs> yeah, middle. Yeah, this is turning a little rapey. Like exactly, it turns <laughs> into this weird like sex for utilitarian purposes. But he's drunk. Like I feel like he should have said some, you know, some yeah. kind of cheeky line or whatever. Yeah. To her, and you're like, ah. even nice tits would have been better. I know, like that would have been <laughs> funny because they're fake, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, they're actually two oranges. I mean, oh, thanks, like. <laughs> Something stupid, and it would have been funny, and it would have been just above, maybe, I think maybe that was, like, the, maybe the 80s, like, censors were in heavy force, yeah. so if you said, like, you know, want to get it on, that's still too, mm, no, uh, you're not doing it, so kids movie, you're not, you want that PG yeah, rating, Yeah, nobody else would have gotten that besides, like, adults. Well, I mean, if you like say that in front of kids, they're gonna be like, "What?" Well, like, if you look at like, if like in a kids movie, they're like nice tits. It's like, eh, that's a little yeah. Too. If, you, if you were like, then you could expect that kid to be like, "Hey, nice tits." Like exactly, like some kid's gonna say that, and they're not gonna understand what the fuck they're saying, and it's just gonna be a whole thing. Yeah, unless you're talking about the bird. The bird. There's a bird called a blue tit. Oh, the, the bird. Yeah, okay. I, I remember I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. There's also a blue-footed booby. And people will be like, yeah, and people will be like, nice tits. Yeah, and it's, and it's like, a bird. Yeah, it's a bird. <laughs> well, I think that's still over a kid's head because why is it funny? It's a bird. <laughs> but still, I think like if you said something along the lines of like, let's get it on or do you want to hang around for a little while or something like that, even that is just suggestive enough to be like, yeah, that's... No, no, leave me alone. You're weird. You're creepy. And you obviously want to... Like, the adult audience gets it. We don't need to spell it out in very verbose ways. There are so many, like... It's like like all the Star Wars... Well, at least the first six of them. So many wipes. So many wipe cuts from scene to scene where, like, the screen just wipes over. And there's... the minute it happened, I for a split second, I was like, are we watching Star Wars? Yeah, it's like that one kid that's giving a presentation using PowerPoint. Yeah, and he found and Star Wipe yeah, to be the coolest thing. Because I've had thing. that happen yeah. where I have to, where I had to, like, sit, you know, and go through this presentation that someone's, like, presenting, and they put too many fucking special effects in it. It's just, it's, yeah. it's the worst, the best and worst part about PowerPoint is... It has all these cool things you could do, and nobody wants you to do it. Yeah. Like, you will never... I can't think of any situation where you really want that shit in there. Yeah. They it's, literally... All they yeah. want is black and white. Like... <laughs> they just, just make it have enough color to keep it stimulated, but make it bland enough to where they don't feel like they have to look at it. Yeah. I mean, 
tips for PowerPoint. So this is the tips for PowerPoint podcast with Thomas and Amber. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this wipe thing, it's just like the minute and Star Wars, I, everyone listening, I suggest when you watch <laughs> Star Wars, please don't do it for the first time. It'll probably ruin the movie for you. But when you watch Star Wars next time, just pay attention to the cuts because once yeah. you notice it, it doesn't go away. Yeah. Like it'll go away between And then viewings, you start but... like saying, Oh, it's to the left yep, wipe. Yep. It's to oh, the it's right. Going down. It's going, it's going down. Up. Oh, we're using that tree to wipe the screen into the next. <laughs> it's like, Oh God. It, and it's just so unbearably obvious. I, I have to say it goes away after each viewing, but when I'm watching it, if I notice it, it's the whole fucking movie's ruined. I might as well stop. Um, I like the Eric is a dick. I okay, let's <laughs> let's dive right into fucking Eric. Like I hate that he's so much of a character in this movie. I know. It's like he keeps popping up. He's and it's the like, brownie of the When you Daitini think that he's people. not gonna be in there anymore, he just like He's back. Yeah, he's back. So Eric is a character, for those of you who haven't seen Willow or you know, want it spoiled for you, I guess. Um Eric is like this random general commander. He's some army lead person. Yeah. And when you first meet Val Kilmer. But not part of the Queen's army. He's like the other side. No, yeah. He's like the, his army is like against the evil Queen's yeah. army. Yeah. And they are getting their asses handed. Yeah. So when you first meet Mad Mardigan, Val Kilmer's character, Eric comes along and is like, they kind of ignore Willow and Willow's buddy. And there he's just like, Mad Mardigan, you son of a bitch. And you kind of think, like, he's going to get him out and Val Kilmer's going to be like, peace out, guys. Like, fuck you and your baby. I'm going to go do something. He'll come up later or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, he's just like, dude, you got to get me out. They're clearly very good friends. Yeah, and like, he's they just, fought together. Yeah, and he's he like, even they're, says they're like, cool with each should, other. Yeah. He's like, like man, if back, I, yeah, he's like, like yeah. he straight up says, I think, man, if I had you in my army, we'd take this queen down, but we wouldn't have lost that battle we're coming from. <laughs> and then he's like, dude, get me out of here. Give me yeah. a sword. Cause Mad Morgan's over here. Like I'm the greatest swordsman in the whole fucking world. And, um, he's like, give me out of here. Give me a sword. And Eric's like, Oh no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that, man. No, sorry. And he's just like, what the fuck? Like, and he's for like, no nah. good reason at His all. reasoning is that like, dude, you're selfish. You're selfish. That's it. You're selfish asshole. And, uh, you're, you're just a thief. You're not a, I don't know. Cause he didn't ever finish it. He's just like, you just don't belong with us. I'm like, you literally just yeah. said. And so he ditches him in this fucking cage. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, if it was my buddy, I'd just be like, look, I'm unlocking the cage. You're on your own. I'm not, you're not following us. Yeah. I don't know shit, but you know, I don't want to see my buddy in this cage. So go, you know, don't die or whatever. But no, he just leaves him there. So then I think, uh, Willow or something, they get him out of the cage and all that yeah. shit. Yeah. But Eric's gone, and you think, okay, I was so scared because I'm like, uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> we gave this guy a name. <laughs> like, <laughs> he might come back. <laughs> but he's such a prick. Like, yeah. from the minute he asked, the minute Val Kilmer asks to get out of the cage, Eric is suddenly like, fuck you, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. You belong here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> So he ditches him, and you think Eric and his buddies are like, bye movie, we're gone, but fuck no. You have this, like, crazy horse chase scene that lands them in, like, the snow yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. and, in this, like, little village. Yeah, they land in this little, like, mountain village, yeah. which was the point in the movie where I was like, Jesus Christ, this doesn't just look like Lord of the Rings in a fantastical way. <laughs> this looks like where they filmed Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> this movie was filmed in New Zealand, just like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> And so I feel like there's got to be that small, like, partition of of fans yeah. that go to New Zealand and they're like, oh, you want to come here to, like, walk the path to Mordor or whatever these nerds are going? And it's like, no, 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 no. I want to walk the path of Willow to Tia Asriel <laughs> and, you know, stop this horrible thing that's happening. And they're, the people in New Zealand are like, the fuck are you talking about? Like. <laughs> It's one level of nerd nerd dumb too far, I think. Yeah. But yeah, this movie was filmed in New Zealand. And I mean, it again, I really wouldn't be surprised if like Peter Jackson was Yeah, you know, Willow was a bit of an inspiration for how we did Lord of the Rings. Cause there's watching this, one of the things I remember thinking was like, wow, there's a lot like I can see a lot of this being a proto Lord of the Rings thing that yeah. with some polish and some shine to it, like is in Lord of the Rings and is executed really well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is in the form of like the set design, uh, the location and just kind of the, 
the way everybody treats the world, I think when you polish that up a little bit, you kind of get Lord of the Rings. This movie is sort of still, mm, people really like Star Wars. Let's not stray too far from that. And yeah. so it comes off a little campier than it should. But, um, yeah, they land in that snow town where they run into fucking Eric again or whatever. Or they get captured or something. I think there's two, I think we're confounding, com- conflating two chase scenes right now. Yeah. Because they get captured, right? Yeah, they do. They get captured and that's where, okay, this is the, uh, no, okay, here's what the brownies fucking do. Which is a stupid plot <laughs> point. They have this dust called like the dust of broken hearts or the dirt of broken hearts yeah. or some shit. And it's, uh. It makes you, like, fall in love with people for a temporary amount of time. Mm -hmm. And Val Kilmer gets whammied by it and falls in love with the evil queen's daughter daughter who's, like, chasing them. Mm -hmm. Um, Which amounts to them. It would have been better if he fell in love with Eric. Oh, what a twist. That's so progressive for 1988. It would have Um, made Eric seem more like... It would have given him something to do because when they run into him again... Because you know what? Then there's a reason why Eric is a fucking asshole. Exactly. But when they run into him again, (laughs) he's just a fucking prick. Like, he's like, we're going to lose, but we're not. But we're going to lose. Like, it's like Willow and Val Kilmer can, like, rally Eric to Mm -hmm. do stuff, but it's kind of like the dust. Is He's only enamored for a little bit, and then he's right back to being like, oh, fuck, this is not Yeah, and the only reprieve is just him dying. Yeah, which, which, was, a good, which yeah. was great. Like, <laughs> when he dies, I was so fucking happy. I was so goddamn happy. But before he dies, there is, like, a, uh, they get to, they find, they escape, they're running away, they mm-hmm. take the queen's daughter captive. I think she gets away, or they drive, there's something to that effect, right? Yeah, she gets away, like, she falls off the horse or something. Yeah, she, like, bails off the yeah. horse, and, and and they're, like, they're trying to chase after her, and at that point, I was kind of like, who gives a shit? Yeah, you're, exactly, you're away. just go. Like, just keep leaving. If she gets back, like, they know where you're going, mm-hmm. and they get where they're going, which is this Tyr Azriel place, it's supposed to be this magical Camelot-esque place where they could save the day or something like mm-hmm. that. And... The baby's been captured. They're just there, and they find that everybody who's at this place is stone now, like turned to not turned to stone, but they're like in stone. Oh yeah. Like everyone, imagine like an iceberg, but it's a rock. <laughs> um, it's really the best way I could think of it. And you get, and the only reason I mention it is because eventually, like you know, they get their shit squared. The baby gets kidnapped, and they go, uh, they go chase down the bad lady. The horrendous fucking scene in this movie. This scene made me almost want to turn it off. The fucking <laughs> pig thing. When she's like, I'll turn you all into pigs. Oh, and like, yeah. the, the good witch makes Willow like cover himself Immune, in a shield yeah. or whatever. And like, she's like, cast the shield spell quick. And he's like, why? She's like, just fucking do it. And like, so he does it. And everyone in this horrendous, like, they didn't need to do it like this. They could have just been like, ah, and then like some magic sparkles yeah. and people, and a pig is where that dude was saying, but no, we show these people in <laughs> agony, like <laughs> mid transition, half pig, half person, like dude on the ground, like riding in pain with big legs and a normal person body and a snap. It's horrible. I'm like, why this had to have cost millions who <laughs> oh, no one asked for it what the fuck is this and they only do it's like it does that and then in minutes later they're just like okay you're back to being normal again yeah. let's fuck shit up and i mean the from there on out you kind of have the big battle they see to the castle you get i think you made this mention amber is like this gets really like star wars because you they find the witch who started doing part one of 38 to kill this kid or yeah. something like that because it takes what appears to be like at least the better part of two days yeah and when they come and find her in the top of the castle she looks like palpatine's <laughs> wife know, my but she god looks like shit. holy <laughs> shit she looks horrible and i'm like where why like why does she look bad i thought this was supposed to help her <laughs> but yeah and you know eric dies and fucking I forgot about the acorns, the useless fucking acorns that Willow gets from Gandalf oh, in the yeah. beginning. He's fucking like, so the the main sorcerer in Willow's town gives him these acorns, and he's like, "Be careful with these. Whatever you throw them at will turn to stone." Yeah. 
And he uses it, I think, like once to do something. I yeah. Know. It was like minor. It wasn't a big deal. But um, like fuck up a bridge or something. But his brilliant idea is, and this is where I'm like pick an ending. It's kind of like when we did Candyman. It's like pick an ending yeah. and stick with it because he takes the acorn and he's like, and it's a great little speech is he's like, I am Willow and I am like an incredibly powerful sorcerer, which he keeps saying to everybody yeah. and it's a blatant lie. And the whole point of this is he's supposed to finally believe it. Mm -hmm. And he throws the acorn and the evil queen catches it. And she's like, ha ha, this isn't, Oh my God. And her arm starts turning to stone and it's kind of badass. Like for a minute, yeah. I'm like, that was clever shit. That's really cool. And her arms are turning to stone and he's like, ha, I gotcha. And then she's like, never mind. <laughs> like, fuck you. And he's like, oh shit. And so they keep fighting over this wand and he does. And then this is where you needed to pick one because in the beginning of the movie, we see him do this little trick where he makes a pig disappear. Yeah. And all he does, I don't know what he does. Maybe he does use a little bit of real magic or something, but he makes the pig go under the table. It's under a blanket on top of the table and he removes the blanket and it's under the table. And everybody thinks the pig disappeared. The problem in the beginning of the movie is the pig runs out from under the table and everyone's like, oh, this guy sucks. And he's like, dang it, I failed. Which, to be our honest, it's still kind of cool that you got the pig under the table without yeah. any means or mechan <laughs> like mechanism. Like, like I is don't there know, a lever in there? You move the pig from point A to point B. Yeah. That's pretty impressive if it's magic, which it seems to be. But he does the same thing with the baby and tricks her and he's she's like what and he's like i sent her to a dimension where she'll never be touched and she's like that's not possible oh my god and then they kill her i don't remember how they kill her i don't remember how they kill her it's something really entertaining though that's all i remember oh i remember she knocks over this like bowl of blood and then she raises the wand to kill Willow. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly she's a lightning rod. And like a lightning oh, bolt comes on and fries her fucking ass. Yeah. It is like, <laughs> why didn't this happen before? <laughs> but yes, yeah, so she's dead. And everyone's like, where the fuck did you send the baby? And he's like, just behind this like rock. It was my old dis pig, disappearing pig trick. And everyone's like, haha, Willow. And he's like, oh, it's me, Willow, yay. <laughs> and, like, everyone's cool. Everyone's happy they save the day. And Willow goes home, much like, you know, the Hobbit, really. Yeah. He goes home. Except, like, er this is the thing I kind of was like, this movie does. I get that in Lord of the Rings, it's sort of like nobody really gave a shit that Frodo was gone or Bilbo was gone. Like, nobody really thought about it. But it was kind of nice to see. Like, everybody in the town all happy to see Willow, and he sees his family, and they're all super happy to see him. Yeah. And it's like, you don't get this kind of quiet, calm return. And I mean, part of it's just because it's not the same kind of movie. I mean, Lord of the Rings is a lot more going on emotionally, but, you know, it was kind of nice to be like, oh, the triumphant return of Willow, and everyone thought he was going to die. And it was just like, oh, no, he fucking did it. He mm -hmm. saved the day, and everybody's happy now. And, like, that was nice. You know, I think Val Kilmer and the other woman decide to, the daughter, decide to, like, raise the baby. Or oh, something. yeah. Is that what happens? Mm -hmm. They, like, adopt the kid. Yeah. And everybody's got crazy names. It's just like Star Wars. When you think about it, like, when nowadays when you say, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi, like, everyone knows who, what you're talking about. Can you imagine back then? It was like, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Ka what's it? What the <laughs> hell? But, yeah, it was, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um... What did you think of this movie, Amber? As, like, now that we've kind of revisited it and relived it for a second time. It was all right. Like, I didn't really enjoy it that much. Although I did find that Willow himself kind of held up the plot. So it kind of made up for it. But otherwise, like, there were just a lot of things, like, going on. And like you said, they... It, <sighs> seemed like they had multiple endings mm. and then they just kind of decided towards the end like what they wanted to do i mean i like both both were great but at the same time it was like you do need to pick one and it's sad that you couldn't do the other but i think that's the difference between this movie and the last movie we did Candyman, was Candyman just had three different endings all of them were like equally as whatever cool i think i liked this one best yeah this movie like both of them are great endings like yeah. how you defeat the witch and I'm just like, that's actually really cool. Like, if he did the disappearing pig trick, that would have been nice. Or if he used the fucking acorns, which we have not touched this whole movie, except yeah. maybe once on accident, it would have been cool. Like, I'm fine with that. And it would have been kind of, but it would have been like, oh man, I would have liked to see what the movie would have looked like if he did the other thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think I agree. Like, there was a lot. This movie definitely 
has got to be like, we're not, I mean, I, I would say like Lord of the Rings really jump started the fantasy genre in mm-hmm. movies again. And like Game of Thrones did that for TV as yeah. well and things like that. I think Willow is honestly, I don't want to say it like it's some revolutionary movie, but I think if Willow was maybe made today or at least in the last 10 to 20 years, maybe it would have been a lot better. Of me. Yeah. It's kind of like the dark crystal. They like right. revamped it and like it became, Oh, like, the dark crystal know. television series is great. And yeah. I mean like you can like, that's the thing is like you think things like game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings and these fantasy things where it's like, yeah, we can, we can gamble on these fantasy TV shows and movies now because people mm-hmm. will actually come to watch them. Yeah. And I mean like, it's one of those movies where I don't want to be like, oh, it's ahead of its time. But like, if it was made today, I think it would have been a better movie just because there would have been a much more clear direction that the movie should go. Yeah. Because this movie kind of walks that weird line of like, is it quite a kid's movie? Not really. Yeah. Like, it definitely seems like it's it's like Star Wars Episode Six. Is it's aiming at kids, but it's also not. Yeah. And I mean, it just, it comes off that way. And it's it, it has the potential to make you kind of question, well, who is this movie for? And I think today, you know, when I was a kid growing up, like we watched Lord of the Rings, but by no means do you go like, this is a movie made for children, you know, it just can be enjoyed by a lot of people. Um, however, though, I will say a couple of bits of trivia is George Lucas allegedly specifically wrote this film for Warwick Davis after he met him during the filming of Return of the Jedi. Okay. So in 1983, he met Warwick and was like, I'm gonna write a movie for you. And he wrote, Willow. <laughs> um, this is all this trivia though, by the way, comes from IMDb. So it's the most easily accessible and also easily like plagiarized trivia in the universe. So who knows? <laughs> but um, allegedly, Warwick Davis said that this film had the largest ever casting call for little people at the time. Between 225 and 240 actors were hired. So wow. little people alone, 200 up to 240 people. Oh, there were 240 goodness. little people actors in this movie, mm-hmm. which. That's actually substantially more than I feel like you see in those shots yeah. in the village. But wow. This was something. So Warwick Davis has a family in the movie. He was only 17 when he filmed this. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is because I, I always had thought that Warwick Davis was a little kid in yeah. Return of the Jedi. And that's in 1983. This movie's in 1988. So it's only like, you know, Dang. five years later. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I guess maybe he wasn't a little kid, but he was at least like, what, 12? Mm-hmm. Um... So he's 17 in this movie and he's got like a wife and like two substantially older kids, Yeah. which I'm like, I don't even know if I can buy that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just weird. Oh, the last bit of trivia I'll give cause I don't want to dig any deeper. <sighs> that pig scene I hate so much. Yeah. It's even worse. What? The large group of pigs outside the castle continuously tried mating. Buckets of cold water were used to separate them. So basically, <laughs> if this was, if this is true, oh God. that whole sequence would have been a bunch of pigs trying to fuck, and they had to keep dumping water on them in between shots. Um, also, apparently Val Kilmer ad-libbed a lot of his dialogue, which shows. Um, <laughs> not in the worst way, but not in the best way. How do you think this movie did when it came out? I think it did okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit worse, mm-hmm. um, obviously, than the Star Wars. I would say maybe like a C, a solid C. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know about C, but it looks like the box office receipts were a lot less than they expected it to be, probably because they were thinking George Lucas and Ron Howard yeah, are attached. We're going to bring, bring in, we yeah. just finished Star Wars yeah. like five years ago. Well, let's do this. So I guess George Lucas actually continued this in books. So, oh, cause you know, this movie feels like we're going to flesh out a world Yeah. eventually. Apparently they didn't. Um, he did a bunch of sequel books instead of movies. Mm-hmm. So the, there are three books that are collectively known as the Chronicles of the Shadow War. Um, he shares writer's credit with Chris Claremont and the books are Shadow Moon in 1995. So a good while later we're starting on these books yeah um so in 1995 you have shadow moon shadow dawn and shadow star which i think you're just beating the shadow title to death <laughs> but i'd be kind of curious what we're getting in the rest of that world though i don't know if i'd want to really read yeah you want to give a guess what the rating is probably like a five or six out of ten a five or six out of ten really yeah it has a 7.3 oh okay actually. what would you give it 
Would you give it a five or six? Like, yeah, would I'd you give it, give it a five, it a five, or, five or, six? or six? Okay. Would you suggest? Well, I guess first off, before I get into that question, what what makes you want to give a five or six? Because it's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. You just like didn't... if I were given the choice to watch it again, I probably wouldn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, would you suggest other people watch it? No. No. Yeah, I don't think it's worth. Yeah. Okay. I think that's probably, I know I, I disagree on that one. I think um, I mean it's not Lord of the Rings. Like don't go into expecting Lord of the Rings, and it does have that like. Yeah, maybe we've just been spoiled. I I do feel that. like that. Like I had to kind of stop. Like halfway through this movie, I had to like stop mentally and just be like, okay, like you can't expect Lord of the Rings. That was something that was like this pivotal moment in the fantasy genre. It changed the game of how we can digest these movies. This movie comes from like 20 years earlier, less than 20 years earlier. Like we got to kind of reset the clock. I'd give for what it is. I'd give this movie maybe a seven. It's got plenty of flaws, but I did find myself like having fun in the movie. Like even if it was just like, eh, this is just, you know, today it's like standard fantasy nonsense. But like, I'm like, yeah, this is fine. Like I'm having fun enough in this movie. I suggest what I would suggest watching it. I think if you find like you're on Disney plus and you don't, know what to watch this is a good way to kill like 126 minutes so you know you're not going to be super disappointed because you should go into it expecting you know the most amazing movie in the world but i am glad we got to watch it like i don't feel like i don't know if i'd want to watch it like again anytime soon (laughs) for sure i don't know if i'd really get much out of it watching it again but i think for the first time around like if you haven't seen this before yeah totally give it a shot but i think that'll do it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all I really have to say about Willow. What about you? Yeah, that's basically it. I feel like we covered a lot of yeah. interesting stuff for you guys to look out for. Yeah, no, I I'd, I would say, unlike my lovely co-host here, <laughs> check out the movie. Like, it's on Disney+. Plus. If you have Disney+, Plus and you're looking for something to watch, yeah, watch I this. Yeah, I mean, it's free. It's, if, you, <laughs> if you have it, it's free. It's there. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I feel like this is, it's also a way, it's also probably one of the few chances you get to watch George Lucas doing something that's not Star Wars or Indiana Jones. I mean, like, those are like, I mean, there are other movies he's done, like American Graffiti and whatnot, but I feel like with the six, like post Star Wars, this is one of the things that comes out. It gives you a chance to see, like, maybe a George Lucas bit that didn't really succeed. You know, like, this is what it looks like when George Lucas doesn't do amazing. I mean, people will say that's the prequels, but still, yeah. you know, people watch those today. So oh, I can't, just can't. watch the recent ones. <laughs> yeah, well, that, the yeah. <laughs> I mean, not directed by him, but. But yeah. Yeah. So that it will do it for us and Willow. So, Amber, what do we got next week? Next week, we've got Paprika. Ooh, Paprika. Our first animated film. Yes. That's going to be fun. Movie about dreams and stuff? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it's like Inception, but anime. Um, so <laughs> more on that next time. That'll do it for us, folks. As always, I am one of your hosts, Thomas. I'm Amber. And we'll catch you next time in Paprika. Paprika.